This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're in the middle of central London, joined by Bob Arum, traveling the world as always. Firstly, how was Japan? Japan was terrific. Uh, Murata came through with a big knockout. There were two uh, smaller weight uh, uh, championship fights on the card. And as usual in Japan, everybody had a great time because uh, Honda of Taikan Promotions is the greatest host in boxing. You're here in central London uh, at a media lunch here to announce a, a mega, mega rematch between Wilder and Fury. Um, you've given us a, a late Christmas present. Well, it's really nice to be here. And uh, the guys, uh, the two participants, uh, Wilder and Fury, are busy today in the United States pumping the fight. Uh, Wilder will be, uh, we have two big college football games, the semifinals for the national championship. And uh, they're getting massive audiences. And ESPN uh, televises the two of them and then the final. And uh, uh, in one, the one in Atlanta, the Peach Bowl, uh, which has the number one team against the number four team, uh, Deontay Wilder will be featured. And then uh, across the country in Arizona at the Fiesta Bowl, when Ohio State uh, fight uh, matches Clemson. Uh, Tyson Fury will be there taking over the telecast. So that, that you see what that means is there will be like about I would think 40 million people watching each of those fights. And w where do you get exposure like that? So people say, when are you going to have a proper press conference? And the answer is never, because. Uh, that both of the fighters will be at the national championships that take place in 10 days. And then even better, both of the fighters will be featured at the Super Bowl, which has like 90 million people watching just in the United States. So who needs press conferences when you can get that type of exposure? I think the criticism about the press conferences more from the UK fans, our ignorance, we don't realize how big college football and uh, the Super Bowl, obviously we're, we're more into to soccer, as you guys say, in America, uh, and boxing's obviously bigger. They don't really show college football, they show the Super Bowl here, but we don't realise how big they are, and uh, you just explained with the numbers you said what kind of events they are and the attention that Wilder and Fury will be getting from those uh, sporting events. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's nothing like it. I mean, for example, we just did a big show in Madison Square Garden with Terence Crawford on the show and uh, uh, Mick Conlon on the show. And we did very, very well. But the viewing audience was about two and a half million, which was very good. But now we're in 40, 60, and 80 and 90 million uh, uh, stratosphere. And, and you can't buy that type of exposure. I mean, for example, a 30 second commercial in the Super Bowl goes for six million the US dollars. Six million for 30 seconds, right? Now, we're gonna, the fighters are gonna be on probably for four and five minutes. You know what that value is? Now, the last time we saw two networks working together uh, and putting on a fight was obviously Mayweather Pacquiao, the biggest grossing fight in the history of any combat sport. Uh, we have it again here with ESPN and Fox working on this fight uh, for this rematch. How positive is that for American boxing? Well, you have to understand, HBO and Showtime were premium networks. Uh, HBO had 28 million homes and uh, Showtime about 15 million. And they were the only ones doing boxing in the United States. So it was a big thing that they were collaborating. Now you have two giant networks with much bigger audiences uh, uh, promoting this fight and talking about the fight, so you can't even compare it. Now, does that mean that because the exposure will be greater, that it will do the numbers that uh, uh, Mayweather and Pacquiao did, which is about five million uh, pay-per-view homes? Well, I'm not predicting that, I'm a, but I really believe we have a good shot to go over 2 million, which would make me very happy. 
Okay, so the first fight was rumoured to do, I think, 300k in America. We weren't sure on the figures on BT Sport in the UK, um, but approximately 350 to 450k worldwide, we heard, in terms of pay-per-view buys. So uh, you're confident this does over 2 million, Bob? Nobody knew who Fury was. I mean, Fury was, uh, you know, they thought he was a joke, the name, you know, and the fact that he had beat Klitschko and, you know, then he disappeared and nobody really knew the real story of what had happened and he had been out of sight for so long. So it wasn't anywhere near the same. And Wilder's profile's gone up. Ex exactly right. And also, Showtime was the one that was the network handling it. And for all of their good intentions, it's a very minor network. You know, they don't have that many homes. Uh, so this is really, it's not a, a really a fair comparison. And also, we've had it one year now to really build up fury in the United States. And thanks to ESPN, we've accomplished that. Everybody, every sports fan in the United States knows who Fury is now. Bob, what did you make of the split between Tyson Fury and Ben Davison? Well, you know, I never get involved in uh, that type of uh, uh, relationship between a fighter and his trainer. Uh, ben uh, always uh, uh, appeared to me to be a terrific guy, a very knowledgeable guy. But, you know, certainly didn't have the experience in the fight business that one would have liked. Uh, the corner didn't seem like they really handled themselves particularly well in his last fight. But Tyson is a very intelligent guy, and the fact that he made a change showed that he felt that uh, he needed to make a change. I'm, I'm satisfied. Uh, that they're using Emmanuel Stewart's nephew, who's a boxing guy, as uh, his head trainer. But I'm really uh, confident because he chose Andy Lee to work the corner, and I'm a big Andy Lee fan. That's a, Andy's a really, really solid fight guy. Most people are predicting a Fury points win or a Wilder knockout. Do you believe your man Tyson Fury can stop Deontay Wilder on February 22nd? Not only do I believe that Fury will stop, can stop Wilder, I'm sure that he will. I really believe that uh, he's not going to leave it to the judges, and I think he'll uh, use his superior boxing ability uh, to take uh, Fury out to take uh, Wilder out. Just back to the network situation, do you think we can see more of this where ESPN and Fox are, are collaborating to put fights on together? Definitely, because you know the major networks in the United States are collaborating all the time. For example, I was telling people that, uh, say on sa a Sunday, Fox is doing uh, a big uh, uh, football game, professional football. Uh, our American football. Uh, well, they'll, they will publicize on that telecast that that night NBC is doing another major game or that ESPN on Monday night is doing a game. So they are beginning to cooperate with each other and that was unheard of a number of years ago, but now they're being smart about it they realize they're in the same sport, and so they promote each other's events. Okay, moving away from Wilder Fury, I uh, just want to ask you about a few potential fights involving your fighters. What's the current situation with Carl Frampton and Jamel Herring, Bob? Well, that fight seemed to have been made in the ring uh, when Frampton had his last fight. Uh, I brought uh, Herring into the ring and they agreed to fight each other. We're going to have to look and see uh, the recovery on Frampton's hands, uh, but I would like to do that fight in Belfast. Uh, Herring has agreed to defend against Frampton in Belfast, and I love fights in Belfast. Uh, last summer we did uh, uh, Conlon on the outside, you know, the, in the, on the fairgrounds, and it was terrific. Well, that was some atmosphere. Do you think uh, Michael Conlon could feature on the undercard of Frampton Herring? 
Well, you know, again, I, I, I don't know because right now we have uh, uh, Conlon scheduled to uh, go on the 15th of March uh, in St. Uh, 17th of March, St. Patty's Day uh, uh, in Madison Square Garden. Okay, another fight I want to ask about, again, American and Brit, Josh Warren and Shakur Stevenson. Can we expect that next year? Well, we, uh, I was telling Frank that the management for Shakur Stevenson will be in my office on Wednesday after the new year. Uh, uh, so uh, we'll know then. I said, I, you know, I'm going to listen, hear them out, hear what they have to say. Uh, the last I knew, they wanted to fight Warrington. They didn't care where it was. So let's see uh, if we can come to terms with that. And if we can, we'll let Frank know immediately. Now, uh, a fight uh, which is probably going to be one of the biggest of the year next year, and I, I'm pretty sure this will happen, Lomachenko and Teofimo Lopez, what a fight that will be as well. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, that fight definitely, you know, Loma was in... Uh, and watch Lopez uh, destroy Comey. I mean, I couldn't believe what I was watching. Uh, but that fight is all set for either April or May of uh, next year, and uh, I can't wait to see it. You know, I, I'm a great admirer of Lomachenko. I think he's one of the most incredible fighters that I've seen since Muhammad Ali. Lopez, I mean, God, I mean, I mean, he throws a punch. I mean, he's almost like a lightweight version of uh, of uh, Deontay Wilder, except he knows how to box, which Wilder doesn't. Now, we saw on that same card, obviously, Terence Crawford topping the bill uh, in a competitive fight against Mean Machine. There's these rumours about Sean Porter potentially happening next. Do you think that's realistic, Bob? Well, yeah. I, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I, coming over here today, I was looking at a website on my uh, on my iPad, and uh, uh, Porter's father uh, said for me to call him uh, to to see if we could work out that fight. So you know that's all I know about it. Uh, I know that Crawford wants that fight. So if Porter is prepared to go through with that fight, uh, I believe it can happen. Yeah, it'd be a great fight. Porter showed me something special in the fight that he had with Spence, which could have gone either way. Mentioning Errol Spence, you told uh, us on the channel, you, Coogan spoke to you in New York, about Errol Spence and the information you received. Have you heard any updates on his health? He obviously done a recent interview with Fox. He did an interview with Fox in person, and so it appears that he is much better than the information that I had. So, I mean, uh, I mean, he's a great fighter, and uh, I hope that he can, when he returns, and it looks now like he will return, uh, that he can revert to what he was uh, before the accident. And just lastly, your man Kubrat Pulev, we expect him to fight Anthony Joshua, perhaps uh, uh, in the UK or even the US. Do you think that's more suited to the UK, though, Wembley 90,000, rather than uh, in America? Well, really, that's up to his promoter, Eddie Hearn. Uh, the split on the fight under the IBF rules is 65-35. So Eddie Hearn has the fighter with the biggest percentage. So we'll listen to him and see what he has to say. Hopefully, we'll be able to get moving on that uh, sometime uh, right after the first of the year. Uh, Pulev, I talked to him from Bulgaria uh, last week, and he is pumped and ready to go. And he's going to surprise Joshua, I really believe that. Of course, in February, you expect your man Tyson Fury to grab that WBC belt, and uh, whenever that Joshua Pulev fight happens, you're expecting uh, your man Kubrat to come through, so top rank could have all the heavyweight belts. Yeah, can you believe for, for a company that wasn't in the heavyweight business, I guess, since uh, George Foreman, uh, we're, we're back in it. So yeah, I'm really optimistic. Uh, I, I give Pulev a hell of a shot with Joshua. I give my guy Tyson Fury a big, big shot with Wilder. Uh, who knows? 
Wouldn't that be something to do a big heavyweight fight and have both corners? Can't forget the ring magazine belt, which is going to be on the line uh, in Las Vegas, February 22nd, between Deontay and Tyson. In terms of all the events you've done, you've promoted the, the best, obviously, that fight in, in Zaire with Ali and Foreman. You've promoted Marvin Hagler and the greatest names of sport that I've ever seen. Where does Wilder Fury 2 rank in terms of an event that you've done in your lifetime? I think it's really big, particularly with the two big U.S. networks behind it. Where it ranks will be determined by the public and what kind of numbers we do on the pay-per-view, both here and in the U.K. But I think it's going to be really up there. Well, Bob, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Thank you for giving us that, that rematch on February 22nd. We're obviously closing off the year now, so do you want to give a, a, a quick message to any of the U.K. fans or fans in America uh, who follow boxing going into the new year? Well, it's going to be a great, great year. And, uh, you know, I, I look with great fondness on the times I came over to this part of the pond, uh, both the Conlon fight uh, in August uh, in Belfast, and then we did uh, uh, Loma and Campbell uh, at the O2 uh, later on uh, in the year. And those were great events. There's nobody, no people around, better boxing fans than the UK fans, and uh, I can't wait for the coming year to be over here uh, more frequently and do more events uh, over uh, this side of the pond. I'm sure some of the UK fans are going to make the trip to MGM Grand Las Vegas and uh, be there in their numbers. Bob Aram, thank you very much for your time on IFL, and uh, Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year to all the fans. And I just want all the fans to know that the hotel casinos in Nevada, having heard about all the Brits coming over uh, for the uh, Fury Wilder fight, they're stocking up and they're bringing in all the beer trucks. Thank you very much, Bob. Cheers.